Monster Wario has cast an evil spell over Mario Land. Don't let Mario get the six golden coins. Don't let Mario reach the palace. This is the biggest, most dangerous, most challenging Game Boy adventure yet. Obey Wario. Destroy Mario. Don't fall under Wario's evil spell in Super Mario Land 2. Only on Game Boy. Now that's marketing at its finest. Parents often complain commercials are hypnotizing their kids to buy their products. And then we have commercials like these that are less subtle and more honest about it. It just makes me want to go to the store right now and buy Super Mario Land 2. Except that commercial was from like 25 years ago. So I guess we'll have to sell for the eShop version. Everyone, Alk Alger, the SideQuest Gamer here, and since it's Sonic's 30th anniversary, I'm going to be that one guy who reviews a Mario game instead, because why not? I'm just kidding. I will finish up the Sonic Game Gear slash Master System reviews after the Zelda Marathon, but I want to take a look at Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy. It is well known among the Mario fanbase, but it's not as talked about as, say, like Super Mario World or Super Mario Bros. 3. Heck, new Super Mario Bros. gets talked about more often than Super Mario Land 2. Super Mario Land 2, the 1992 sequel to the Game Boy launch title known as Super Mario Land. Obviously. While I was a little generous with my rating for the first game, I still think Mario Land 1 is a very good game in its own right, and in my opinion, better than the original Super Mario Bros., to which it was trying to replicate the gameplay style of, and succeeded. I just love the new enemies, the unique levels, and especially some of the shooting segments that kept things interesting, while it's not strong in the control department as Mario feels just as stiff as he did in the original Super Mario Bros. I would probably give Super Mario Land 1 an 86 out of 100. Definitely a very good game, well worth your time. It is a little short, but you can't go wrong spending $4 on it for the 3DS eShop. Now flash forward to the early 90s, how do you follow up Super Mario Land? Well, to quote my colleague Paul Kelly of PK's Retro Reviews, while Super Mario Land 1 was like the original Super Mario Bros. in terms of gameplay, Super Mario Land 2 was like the Super Mario World of the Game Boy in terms of gameplay. You start off the game and see the sprite work looking very similar to Super Mario World, not to mention having a similar style overworld. The gameplay is similar, although when accounting for its method of progression and exclusive enemies, boss battles and power-ups even, it's quite different and original. But as for the development of this game, like its predecessor, it was not created by Super Mario Bros. creator Shigeru Miyamoto, but rather Hirochi Kayotake this time, and with Game Boy, Game & Watch, and Metroid creator Gunpoi Yokoi serving as a producer this time. The story, as seen as the instructions manual, and especially the commercial, takes place after the first Super Mario Land. Introduced in this game is Mario's arch-rival named Wario. Mario's name and design with the Japanese word Wariui, meaning bad in English. Make him muscular as well as fatter, and you get Wario. Five points for originality, Nintendo. Basically, Wario took over Mario's castle by hypnotizing all the island's inhabitants to do his bidding, and in order to access the castle to reclaim it, Mario has to collect one of six golden coins, hence the game's subtitle, Six Golden Coins, hidden at the end of each world. They're guarded by six bosses, with one of them being Tatanga from the last game. So does that mean Super Mario Land 1 was nothing more than a diversion for Mario, so Wario could move right into his castle? Also, since when did Mario get a castle? And why is it mentioned in like future Mario games other than Mario Party 2 and Wario Land 1? Perhaps I'm thinking too much into the Mario continuity, but still. I love how the story ties into the gameplay. Rather than have a linear game where the goal is to go through 8 worlds with your reward being the princess, each world in Super Mario Land 2 has a purpose to it. Since there are 6 golden coins, there are 6 worlds, or zones in this case, like Sonic, in this game. There's Tree Zone, Space Zone, Macro Zone, Pumpkin Zone, Mario Zone, I know it's a giant Mario robot, and Turtle Zone. 
Tree Zone is neat because not only do you platform through forest-like areas, but also you can go inside a giant beehive in one level. It introduces you to the Rabbit Ears ability with a level design entirely around it. I usually start with this zone, and who can honestly forget the bird boss at the end? <laughs> Space Zone is honestly my least favorite zone in the game. You have to go through the top exit in the hippo level in the overworld, and then traverse through the two levels in Space Zone. The first giving you a floaty jump, and the second being pretty much a glorified water level with its zero gravity gimmick. And Tatanga is my least favorite boss in the game because even if you know what you're doing, sometimes you'll take damage. Although I do like how it's set in space as it makes this portable games world feel all the more massive. Macro Zone is probably my second favorite world in the game as you traverse through these giant levels as a shrunken version of Mario, kind of similar to Big Island from Super Mario Bros. 3, except the Goombas are also small. You do start the game in the garden dealing with ant enemies, then you go indoors. The boss of that world is a sewer rat, that's not too bad if you get the pattern down. He basically comes out of the pipes he goes into. Pumpkin Zone has a Halloween theme to it, and it does it well. The levels are filled with a series staple booze, and it's nice to see these levels taking place at night. And there's even like Jason Voorhees people walking around. It's very neat. It's not really creepy, but it does stand out for its unique art style. The boss battle with the witch is challenging, but memorable since she casts fire under the pots you use as platforms, so the lids fly off once heated. Not my favorite zone, but it's pretty fun to play through. And we're on to Mario Zone, aka that giant out of place Mario robot to which this game doesn't explain its existence or how it was created in the first place, but we accept its existence regardless. It is my favorite world in the game as it sports a rather clockwork level themes, as well as have some rather suggestive themes. Yeah, you know those red balls used in that level for platforms? Those are stomach bubbles. Nothing more, just stomach bubbles. What would you think it was? Yeah, YouTubers always make jokes about that specific level, but I always ask, isn't that Mario's stomach? But no, we have to go for the double entendres you'd hear at a middle school health class. But anyways, the Mario Mech Zone is weird but fun nonetheless, although it is strange that you have to fight three little pig heads as bosses at the end. It just seems a little out of place, I guess it makes sense. And finally, we're at Turtle Zone. And it's probably my second least favorite zone in the game. The first level wasn't too bad, but the underwater submarine level goes on for a little too long. The boss level is inside a giant whale where you are introduced to the diver Goombas you'll later see in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga for the Game Boy Advance. At the end of this giant whale is an octopus boss battle. And it's pretty easy. Each boss has one of six coins, as I previously mentioned, but what I love so much about Super Mario Land 2 is that you can play these zones in any order you choose, making this 2D platformer feel more like a world and less like an obstacle course. Sure, in the previous games you had your warp zones and warp whistles, and Super Mario Bros. 3 and World toyed it with the idea of multi-branching pathways, but Super Mario Land 2 is a whole new experience. Although, it is worth noting that after those six zones, the game spikes in difficulty where you enter the final level being Wario's Castle. That level is tricky, especially if you're not accustomed to how Mario controls. I mostly died during the collapsing platform hopping segment, as I either overshooted my jump or undershooted my jump. And the main reason why this level is hard is because there are no checkpoints. So you have to do this in one run perfectly. Well, not perfectly. There are power-ups like Fire Flowers on the way that can bring you up to size. Keep in mind there are five of those Wario Ball mini-bosses as well as a three-phase final boss with Wario himself. Which I think is really cool because Wario uses the power-ups Mario could use and I've never seen a boss do that before in a Mario game. I don't think it's a spoiler by telling you that Wario is the final boss of the game. What? What'd you expect? Wario's had to suddenly levitate over Wario, saying that it was merely using Wario as a puppet, and then it will go to the moon in Space Zone, and then have the moon say it'll consume everything in Mario Land? Didn't think so. But the level design overall is well constructed. There are only a select few that I really didn't like, but for the most part, they're imaginative and memorable, as well as fun to play through. 
While there are many new enemies introduced in this game, I love how the enemy variety has a few familiar faces like the Koopas and Goombas, but Bowser is not present in this game, meaning these inhabitants were probably once friends of Mario. I also love how this game controls similarly to Super Mario World, where if you're in super mode, you can do the spin jump by pressing jump and holding down, breaking those certain blocks that you would see in some levels. Didn't think that was possible for Mario. I do think Mario controls a lot better in this game than his predecessor. Of course, that's a given because the controls have to be improved for the sequel. However, dash jumping could be a hassle if you aren't used to Mario's physics, as sometimes I would jump higher than expected or lower than expected, therefore inconveniently affecting the trajectory of Mario's jump. But this is on very rare instances and only applies to the inexperienced players. In other words, get good scrub. The power-ups like the bunny ears, which allows Mario to hover when you tap the jump button, which for some reason I always thought of as bat ears when I first played this game, are a nice addition to this game. There's the returning fire flowers, which functions as well as it did in Super Mario Bros. 1, 3, and World. It's worth noting that the coins in this game are used as currency and not as a method of getting lives when you collect 100. The more coins you collect, the better the slot minigame rewards would be, especially the 20-up prize you get from spending 999 coins, but that's only if you're lucky. The 1-ups are not mushrooms, but rather more generic heart shapes, probably because of the black and white screen making the player unable to differentiate the red and green mushrooms, so a heart will do just fine. The graphics of this game are phenomenal for Game Boy standards, and it looks pretty good to this day. You'd think for a 1992 game that it would show signs of age, but no, because they went for a cartoony aesthetic standard with the Mario series. This game's art style does seem to borrow a lot from Super Mario World, most notably Mario Sprite, although the Goombas and Koopas look similar to their Super Mario Bros. 3 counterparts. The rest of the enemies look silly in their cartoony glory, and I love it to death. The backgrounds and foregrounds especially, as they seem to make their levels feel more open and alive. In other words, no two levels really look alike or identical, so you can appreciate the time and effort that went into this game's art style. The music is some of my favorite on the handheld. It was composed by the legendary Kazumi Totaka, and yes, Totaka's song can be heard in the game over screen after two and a half minutes. This was actually one of his earliest works, and I have to say I like it a little more than the first game's soundtrack. I love the athletic theme as well as the many variations of it used in accordance to the atmosphere their respective levels are conveying. There are also several original upbeat chiptunes used throughout the game that do fit the overworld locales as well as some of the levels themselves. I can see why Totaka is as renowned in the gaming community as he is, as he did an excellent job with this game. But overall, Super Mario Land 2 is probably my favorite game on the Game Boy. Heck, it's my favorite handheld exclusive Mario game. Games like this are the reasons why I prefer the Game Boy's 8-bit library over the NES's 8-bit library, and it will get my score of a 96 out of 100. While the first game was short, Super Mario Land 2 succeeded in not only bringing the console Mario experience to the handheld, but also making it feel fresh and original to the point where I'll say it's better in some aspects. In fact, this Mario game would rank in my top 5 favorite Mario games of all time. Excluding all the spin-offs and RPGs and all that, just Mario platformers in general, and yes, I know I ranked it as number 6, but I would change so much if I were to remake that list. I can't tell you how many times I replayed this Game Boy title, and heck, I can see it ranking in my top 50 favorite games of all time, if we're not going by the one per franchise rule. Super Mario Land 2. It's $4 on the 3DS eShop. I'm not sure how much it costs in other regions, and I'm not going through the conversion rates. So, it, it's pretty cheap on the 3DS eShop. That's all you should know. It's really fun. It's a 3-4 to four hour adventure. I cannot recommend it enough. I actually played the entire game through my sister's high school graduation. And don't worry, it was before they were handing out diplomas. During the time I was playing, they were just handing out scholarships to nerds I never even met. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those nerds are building a future for our proud country. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Play Super Mario Land 2. I cannot recommend it enough. You don't even have to play the first game to know what's going on. Anyways, again, thank you so much for watching. And remember to... Obey, side quest gamer. Destroy J of J's reviews.